I was very impressed. He was very, very small and, you know, it's not, not the sort of job that one would expect uh, a person like this to be doing. But um, it soon became very apparent that she was the governor of the situation. Uh, we went into the flat and um, introduced ourselves. And uh, first thing she said to Blondie, he, he, he used to sport a very good handlebar moustache. And the first thing she said to Blondie, off. I don't want to but she be stinking of England. So I looked at him, and this was my first encounter with Hasler. And I hadn't got any scissors, I'd only got a pair of nail scissors. And I said, you've got to take that dreadful growth off. <laughs> and so he had to cut <laughs> I believe it's in the book, isn't it, in the Cockleshell Heroes. And I can still see Sparks turning round and says, oh, ma'am, she said, and that's the pride of Plymouth. <laughs> The impression that she gave me was one of safety. I felt safe if Mary was about, even though um, she spoke in English and she had she had very funny ways. I don't think any other organisations thought a lot of her ways, but this girl really gave me confidence. I, I felt safe all the while I knew she was about. By the spring of 1943, Bill Sparks and Blondie Hasler were safely home in England.